Radio, Raheem here with Eddie Hearn in Cardiff, Wales. It seems like I chase you all over the globe these days. Yeah. We've got Anthony Joshua and Carlos Takeum, whom no one expected to be on the other side of this car just a few weeks ago. Mm. Anthony's had to deal with uh, different changes along the way. Obviously, there's been some hiccups with the Klitschko fight, and now um, this fight comes in last minute. Do you feel like... This is something basically that now he's accustomed to. It doesn't really change his approach to the fight. Uh, this is the first time it's really happened, to be honest with you, in, in a fight. So, like you said, first of all, it's Klitschko. Then it was Pulev. Now it's Takam. No other fight has ever fallen through for him in his preparation in his other 19 fights. So there's something new to deal with in that respect. AJ doesn't really care. He just loves to fight. You know, the trainer, Rob McCracken, a little bit different. You know, you've been training for eight or nine weeks for a guy who's six foot five, you know, awkward, rangy, and now you've got a six foot two guys who comes in low, wings big shots, relentless pressure. It's a completely different style. So that's, you know, the challenge in this fight is Carlos Takam, but it's also, you know, the, the, the change in preparation and the disruption uh, in preparation. But this is going to be a good fight. You know, I think this is going to be a better fight than the Pulev fight would have been. It's going to be an explosive fight. And he's got to use his brain rather than his heart. Unfortunately, he loves to fight. So I think you're going to see them engage and go to war for as long as it lasts. Well, when I mentioned the hiccups, I meant like when Klitschko didn't happen on the date that yeah. we expected and all that, and you get up for a fight and then you gotta, you know, start the training yeah, camp for the next yeah. date. And this fight, he said he's gonna box in a phone booth. I don't yeah. know if the word got back to you, but it doesn't sound yeah. like he's looking for brains, no, he's looking that's, for brawn. That's the problem, because you don't fight like that against Carlos Takam. You know, you, you box him, you use your height, your range, but he doesn't. He loves to fight, and he's excited by the Takam fight because Takam's going to be right in front of him. You saw him on the pads. He's going to be relentless. He does like half an hour of pads. Do you know what I mean? He's just this. This is Takam's going to do exactly what it says on the tin. Um, but AJ just got to be smart. Don't take silly shots. Don't trade. But listen, I can't tell him. He, he, he likes to entertain. He loves to excite, and that's why 78,000 people will be there on Saturday to watch him fight. Now, we talked about getting up for the fight, and with all that said, he's a huge favorite. I think it's 33-1 yep, yep. on his side, 14-1 on the other side. <clears throat> Is it a concern of yours <clears throat> that he may take this fight a little lightly, saying things like fight in a phone booth, want to be entertaining, mm. want to continue to you know um, knock people out in spectacular fashion, and not look at this guy as a real threat? Oh, he knows he's a threat, and he knows Carlos Takam. And, you know, Anthony studies the division. Sometimes he doesn't tell you that he does, but trust me, he does. And he believes that he can trade with Takam and clean him out. And it will be exciting and fun and people will love it. But, like, again, <laughs> what I would like him to do, and maybe what even Rob McCracken would like to do, may not be what he decides to do on the night. Um, but, again, with Takam, it's all very well saying to box him at range. He's going to be in your face the whole fight. But he's got to walk into a steam train in Anthony Joshua, who's the hardest puncher in the division and the fastest puncher in the division. So, you know, I'm excited. I'm, I, it's one of those shows, one of those nights where I look forward to getting through and planning 2018. It's been, like I said, a lot of hiccups along the way. You know, deal with Takam, get the win, the fourth defense of his world title, the first mandatory defense, get it out of the way and move on. How did Takam become the choice for this fight? I mean, once Pulev fell out, yep. Why is Takam the guy? And like you said, you want to prepare for 18, but we thought we might even see a pretty spectacular end of 17. There's some other options. How did no, this no become? Other, no other options. Uh, when you fight an IBF mandatory, very straightforward, you have to fight the IBF mandatory, and you go straight down the list to the next available contender. No step aside no, as, as no, an no, option. Listen, Carlos Takam would definitely not have been the, the choice. You know, we would have chose someone like Pulev or someone less aggressive or maybe, you know, a last minute notice. The IBF phoned up and said, Pulev's out, next in line, Carlos Takam, speak to him. Went away, spoke to them. We'd already had the situation in place where we told Takam that if Pulev falls out, the IBF will go to you. So be ready, box on our show in Monaco next week, okay, so that you're not training for no reason. He's been training for six or seven weeks, not necessarily for the Joshua fight, but knowing in his head that if something happened, that could come up. That was curious to me because it seemed like you had an understudy for this fight. He was ready to go, deal ready to go. Did you suspect that Pulev might fall out for one reason or another? Not necessarily suspect, but I do know that he's, you know, not a complicated guy, but, you know, he's very well known in Bulgaria and, you know, you never know what these guys are going to do. But more importantly, when you've got 78,000 tickets sold, 
and you've got a huge Sky Sports box office event, Showtime boxing all around the world, you've got to take precautions. And we knew that if, if they were going to go and put the IBF, uh, the next guy in, which is Takam, let's get him ready. You know, and he's French, we were going to box him in Monaco. So everything worked out with his promoter as well. So he was ready to go. As soon as Pulev pulled out, I phoned up Chris Kirchie and Team Takam. They said, we're ready all day long, let's go. And it was done. So it was a seamless switch, which is good because you can't have days that go past and there's no opponent and it was an hour. Yeah, so, right. I got know, one update, then I yeah, got the next exactly. one immediately. So that's important. And, you know, we've done a good job. We've got a good fight. And the Anthony Joshua show rolls on.